What's up, everyone? This is Christian Duke from StrengthAddicts.com, and before anything, I want to thank everyone that took the time to watch Duke vs. Romano Thursday night RxMuscle.com's Iron Debate. A lot of people, especially my close friends, want me to set the story straight, sort of give my side, and I will. But before I talk about Iron Debate, let me take you back a couple of weeks. As you all know, Matt Mainrod last shot against Chris Aceto. I wrote an article. Dave Palumbo gave me a quote. The next week, last Monday on Heavy Muscle Radio, Chris Aceto, Dave Palumbo talked about my article. They both had really nice things to say, especially Chris Aceto. The second half of Heavy Muscle Radio, John Romano came on, apparently said a lot of bad things about me. I was taping the Greg and Joe show with Greg Valentino and Joe Piotaro for MuscleSportMag.com Monday afternoon, and I was listening to said show Monday night. I don't listen to RX Muscle shows. I don't watch their shows. I really don't listen to any radio or TV shows that I'm not on. Every once in a while, I do listen to the Greg and Joe show. I happen to like it a lot, but that's the exception. So I started getting some emails from people telling me that John had said all these things. And even without listening to the show, I said, Dave, why don't you put me on Iron Debate? You've always talked about it. Let's do it. That night, Wednesday night, Dave said, okay, well, what do you want to talk about? I said, well, when I put or I helped put Jerry Branham on Iron Debate, you guys wrote questions for him. And I think it's only fair that you write questions for me and John. So Dave said, okay, fine. I'll send you the questions tomorrow, meaning Thursday morning, you'll have them prepare, whatever. Thursday morning came and went, no emails. I said, Dave, where are the questions? He said, well, we'll get them to you at noon. I said, okay, noon came and went. Dave, where are the questions? Oh, we'll get them to you soon. Yeah, but Dave, the show's at 4.30 or 4.45. And I remember telling him the day before I had to work and I couldn't do the show any earlier than six, but he said, you know, Sadiq has to go cover some sporting events, so we need you to do it at 4.45. I said, okay, fine, we'll do it at 4.45. One o'clock was coming up. He still didn't have them. I said, Dave, you want me to write the questions? He said, sure. So I wrote a bunch of questions and he picked three. The three that you hear in the main iron debate, the three main questions I wrote. There's two questions in the face-off, one of which I wrote. So I wrote one of the two questions for the face-off and all three questions for Iron Debate. Not only that, as I already said, I had to work my schedule around the 445 hour. I did it. I also prepared for this. I had notes and I was going to give it my all. Meanwhile, John Romano, when I saw him, I said, this guy can't possibly do a debate. He looked like he hadn't slept in two or three days. A lot of what he said was incoherent. His eyes were all glassy. It didn't look good. The show gets started. First question, message boards, what do I think? I list five or six different points. John Romano addresses one or two of those points. Then Sadiq Faroki says, okay, Christian, it's time for your rebuttal. So I say, okay, cool, I'll take the first rebuttal. I'm about to start talking. John Romano's like, no rebuttals. If he has a rebuttal and I have a rebuttal, we'll be here forever. So John Romano was happy with the fact that the first question, all said and done, was five minutes. Mind you, Iron Debate goes from 45 minutes to an hour. So if he was happy with one question taking five minutes, it stands to reason that he wanted the other four questions to be five minutes. 5 times 5 is 25. What do we do with the 35-minute excess? I don't know. And I thought that was weird. You know, doesn't John Romano realize it's an hour-long show? As the episode went on, but before that, he just interrupted me for my rebuttal, wouldn't let me have it. And when he finally did, after like a minute or two, he said, I said, well, how long can I get to say? And he said, three seconds. It was just totally rude. And later in the show, I did the exact same thing to him. But in hindsight, I wish I hadn't because after the show, people were telling John on the RX muscle boards, they were saying, were you stoned? Were you on Valium? What was up with you? You look terrible. And John admitted that he had smoked marijuana before the show. So had I known he was stoned, I wouldn't have done it again. I thought he was interrupting me. I thought he wasn't addressing all my points. And I thought he was off on the time just because he was being a jerk. And in fact, he was stoned and he was out of his mind. Johnny Styles, the first five minutes of the show was an utter embarrassment. Most of the people that I sent to watch it just didn't want to because they said, well, Dave can't see himself on the monitor. There were audio and technical glitches throughout the whole show. Proving once again that Rx Muscle is never... Uh, was never, is never, and never will be on the same level as Muscular Development or Flex Online. Johnny Styles is a subpar producer, and that's not me saying it because of personal animosity. It's because the first five minutes were a joke, and the whole show people are complaining that they can't hear, that the audio is skipping. It was just terrible. It was a horrible failure for him. Sadiq Faroki, nice guy. I wanted to interview him for strengthaddicts.com, still do. As a moderator, really, he didn't do anything. He never silenced John. He never silenced me. He would never dare silence Dave. So, again, he didn't really do anything. Um... Dave Palumbo, again, I thought was a judge because he's the one that decides, and it's his show, as he said. Uh, he says he's actually just one of the debaters, which I think is weird because he said it's his show, it's his website, and he's the one that ultimately decides who wins because he's a tiebreaker or whatever. I thought that was very strange. The text. A lot of people are saying, well, why did you answer a text message on air? Did you stage it? Did you want a name drop? No, 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 no. Here's what happened. A few hours before I went on Iron Debate, I texted Jim Manning and I said, I'm going to be debating with John Romano on a show at rxmuscle.com called uh, Iron Debate. And normally, Jim and I talk on the phone every so often, but normally we text. And usually it takes him a couple hours to get back. 
and unfortunately he got back to me as I was answering the second question. Now, normally, if I answered the first question first, one would you know assume that I would answer the second question second, you know, sort of be fair, but they gave it to me first. And I wasn't going to have Jim Mannion wait what could have been as much as 55 minutes to get back to him because I was doing a show at rxmuscle.com. Um, before the show, exactly all I said was, I'm doing a show at Rx Muscle. During the show, all I said was, I'm doing a show at Rx Muscle. And when I said, I finally had to say I was talking to Jim Mannion because they thought that I was talking to no one. They thought I was making it up, that I was just randomly texting people or trying to be rude, which I wasn't. I said, I'm talking to Jim Mannion. And John Romano said, tell him I said hi. And then everybody in that studio erupted into laughter. And I thought that was incredibly disrespectful because if you know the backstory, when I was on Power Hit Radio co-hosting with John Romano, I tried to bring him as close as possible to J.M. Mannion and Jim Mannion as I possibly could because John Romano had been writing articles about their family. I mean, forget about the IFBB and the NPC. He was actually setting his sights on their family, people that weren't even involved in the sport, people that weren't even of 18 years of age, and he was going after them. And, and it wasn't really, it was really screwed up. I'll tell you something, you go after my family, I'll never forgive you. I mean, I'm not some tough guy or anything, but I'll never forgive you. That's just things you don't do. And they forgave him. So when I made it abundantly clear that I was talking to Jim Mannion and John Romano stoned off his ass, said, tell him I said hi. And then everybody started laughing. I took great exception to that because Jim Mannion, J.M. Mannion, the IFBB, they have been more than gracious to John Romano in accepting his apology after all that he did to get off with just an apology. I, I, I just, you know, and I told Jim Mannion that. I told him that after the show. I said, you know what? Uh, I was I was really offended. And then when Mel Chancey called, they said, well, I guess Christian sounded off the alarms. That's what John, uh, Dave Palumbo said. And again, when they said that Mel Chancey had called, everyone erupted into laughter. And again, you know, I wasn't as offended as I was for Jim Mannion, but I, I was also partially offended for Mel Chancey because I don't think they were laughing with him. I think they were laughing at him. Kind of like, oh, here's this like, you know, errand boy or whatever, or here he is checking up on me and this and that. And in all, all honesty, I mean, I don't know what Mel Chancey said. I don't know who called Mel Chancey. I don't know. But the reality of the matter, I, I, I thought that was very rude of them. Um, so all in all, I feel bad that I interrupted John uh, at the end of the show just because, you know, he was stoned when he did it to me. And had I known he was stoned, had I known he had diminished capacity, had I known he had short term memory loss, had I known that, uh, you know, he had no idea or concept of time. I probably wouldn't have done it to him. Um, the whole time, you know, I was in through Skype, so I never saw Dave Palumbo or Sadiq Faroki. All I could see was on one screen, John Romano, and on the other screen, Johnny Styles. Whenever I would talk, Johnny would go like this. Oh my God. And then he would talk, you know, trash to me. And when I didn't want to look at Johnny, I'd look at this sort of comatose, sort of just out of it, John Romano, you know, also doing the same thing and nodding. And that's all I could see. So, you know, it's all I could hear. And, and you know, you guys at home don't realize John Romano, uh, you know, he was just talking to his computer. I had headphones in my ears. So I could hear John like yelling right over me as I was speaking. I could hear everything that Johnny Styles was saying right in my ears. And there's only so much someone can take. And, you know, for people at the Arx Muscle Central boards to think that John Romano was on Valium or marijuana and to turn out that he actually was on one of them, uh, you have to understand to, to have someone that's rude, belligerent, basically an asshole as John Romano is and everyone knows him to be and on top of that stoned uh, and just he seemed like he was oblivious why are you talking about this so much why are you presenting so many points why are you arguing so zealously like what what it's a debate John if you weren't stoned off your ass on marijuana you would have known it was a debate and I was trying to prove points because I was hoping to convince the tiebreaker Dave Palumbo who I was led to believe was impartial uh, who was more biased than could be and when I told Dave, I'll write the questions of the show so long as you give me credit, I thought that was our understanding. In typical Dave Palumbo fashion, he never once said I wrote the show. So instead now he's saying that I only got on the show to get him in trouble, which again is a lie. I got on the show because the Monday prior, John Romano was trashing me. I was taping another show on another website. I didn't care about your site. And now he's saying that, uh, you know, all of these things, you know, and then they all got a big laugh when I said I have uh, pr uh, press credentials in six days. What is so funny about somebody that has a website as a one-man show, you know, one man in a car, no production teams, you know, no audiovisual teams, no sponsors paying me $20,000 a month for a website that can't sell a bag of oatmeal with a 40,000 email listserv. I mean, come on. I don't have any of that. I'm just one guy. You know what I mean? I don't compete. I'm a fat guy on top of that. And I've been able to go and get press credentials in six different states. 
I've been able to do Rick's Corner, three episodes of The Greg and Joe Show, the episode of uh, uh, Three Questions with Tad the Diet Coach, your show. I've helped put people on all of your shows. I've helped expand your site as much as I can. So I don't really understand what's so funny about me getting press credentials and giving interviews and taking photos of hardworking uh, MPC competitors in six states and they're all laughing and because Dave Palumbo said it now Johnny Styles is quoting it on their boards it to me honestly Johnny Styles would be I think better off spending time doing his job uh, John Romano would probably be a much better debater if he wasn't stoned and Dave Palumbo I mean go bleach your teeth or you know get some Botox in your forehead or something but in all honesty don't poke fun at me because I did a really good job and I think I won that debate